get my shoes and out the door. I'm alive, six, seven, eight. Hello, loyal fans. Here is a quick peek at our supplement product and book of the month for October. At the end of the podcast, I will spend a few minutes going into further detail, so check it out. The supplement of the month for October is our very own probiotic power, with the 10% discount code for the month of October being lowercase o, lowercase c, lowercase t, the number 19, lowercase h-e-l-t-h-y-g-u-t. So it's October 19 Healthy Gut. The product of the month for October is Peak Tea Crystals. Look out for October specials. The book of the month for October is Now is the Way, an unconventional approach to modern mindfulness by Corey Allen. Keep in mind all the links, discount codes, and special offers for the product, supplement, and book will be listed in the show notes and iTunes, posted on social media, and in our weekly newsletter, and on our website at www.beyondyourwildestgenes.com at the Listen Now tab. Thanks for listening. Hello, and welcome back to Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. Over the last year or so, I've interviewed a few guests who are on my personal Jedi Council for you Star Wars fans. These are people that I trust with my health and wellness and that are great referral sources for my patients and people who trust me with their health and wellness. Today's guest is another member of my personal Jedi Council, and that's Dan Boisitz. Um, uh, I would say about six months ago, we also had Dan's wife Jody on the podcast so I definitely suggest you go back and listen to that if you haven't it was a great interview as well uh, but Dan is my go-to guy for body work and that's the topic of today's podcast body work 101 and you know I like to do uh, simple kind of explanations on things like this so I'm a great fan of 101 type podcasts so how are you today Dan I'm doing great. No, it's good to, good to be talking to you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So let me do your bio, uh, and it's short and probably pretty modest, and then we'll dive right in. Dan is educated in cranial sacral energy work, structural balancing, which is actually, or a.k.a. rolfing, and has began touch therapy in 2005. His primary goals are to bring his clients lasting relief from pain, help them de-stress, and support them on their wellness journeys. One of his core beliefs are that touch therapies are deeply transformational and I agree so Dan I've gotten to know you personally over the last I don't know two and a half three years or so I've experienced your work I've referred people to your work can you flesh out your bio a little bit more so our audience can get a better idea of who you are sure um, again thanks Noah um, let's see I completed an initial massage therapy certification 15 years ago from there, I immersed myself. I'm located in New York, New Jersey area, so I immersed myself in massage um, everywhere and across the, the city. Um, at a point, I realized there was a lot more to this and, and to the offering, so I began to investigate uh, great teachers, which took me out to Denver to study um, structural balancing, a.k.a. structural integration, created by Ida Rolf. And from there, I realized that nuts and bolts, hardcore therapy was not the only answer to getting the body to respond uh, in a healing way. So I studied source point therapy with Bob Shree. Uh, and then I continue my education to this day with Hugh Milne studying cranial sacral. Wow. So you are a consummate and a continual student. I get the, I get the idea. <laughs> True. <laughs> True, it never ends. <laughs> it never ends. And, you know, and I mentioned this in the past. I believe we were both, you, me, my wife, and, and your Joe. wife, were all, yes. all at Montclair State at the same exact time and never knew each other. That's correct, right? <laughs> yes. True. That's True. Funny. And that was 20, 20 years ago. But, uh, oh, my God. Uh, hard to believe. It is. It is. So I mentioned I want to take this interview from the point of Bodywork 101. So let's start here. From your point of view, what is the difference between bodywork and what you first started with this whole this whole massage therapy journey? Great question. So I believe that the difference is uh, both on behalf of the practitioner and the receiver that massage therapy is understood as something of a luxury. Uh, contrasting that bodywork 
uh, um, becomes once the, the, the recipient begins to dive into receiving the work and certainly the practitioner who's got to have a lot of years of practice to, to begin to understand and deliver this work well. Body work seeks to find a root cause of concerns in the body, both inward and outward. Right. So a massage, like you said, is a luxury. You know, you might get a monthly or by a weekly or a weekly massage. And, uh, you know, they might address the entire body and you leave feeling good. And it's definitely therapeutic. But there may not be um, a diagnosis of sorts or something that's kind of digging deeper to find out where your linchpin problems are. Is that another way to say it? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. When we when we when we meet somebody as a body worker, you know, we're, we're looking the, the 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 conversation and the dialogue happens as soon as the person walks through the door. And then when we get to look at their body, we're looking at specific things in terms of horizontals and verticals in the body, rotations in the body, and we seek to balance them or oh, any of the uh, any of the misalignments. Well, after all these years, are there any is there any real common misalignments that you see on a regular day in and day out basis? Indeed. Let's see. There's the the predominantly righty person that has done everything in their life up until they see me and probably after that with their one side. Uh, there are the challenges of our modern day with having to sit in our travel cars and sitting at desks at computers and holding our phones where the forward head tilt um, which speaks directly to the foundation the sacrum becomes a problem where the first second and third ribs start to get congested and we want to lift that up and out and then you know there are always these um, sort of miscellaneous things that are going on which are the more challenging things but those two um, are, are the primary yeah, I, I can tell. I mean, I, I my body is is overdeveloped on the right side. I have rotations on the right side. My shoulders higher on the right side. You, you know this, Dan. Right, right, but uh, right. and that's from you know being a chiropractor for almost 19 years and working exactly. on, on the same side of the table day in and day out. You know, for exactly. 19, 19 years. 19 right, years. right, absolutely, man, absolutely. You know, it, there's you know there's um um that physical challenge over time and that's that's a great point Noah is that you know some people will come in and say well I you know I I, I played beach soccer ball you know so, or, or volleyball for the first time in in the whole year or in five years and and I really think that's what caused my shoulder injury but meanwhile over 15 20 years somebody's doing the same thing for a long period of time and that's really the misalignment that needs to be corrected in order for that not to happen right it's 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 really never the, the the straw that broke the camel's back and what happened 20 years prior right? every single yes. day in most cases unless and i tell my patients all the time unless it's a direct blunt trauma like a football injury where someone crashes into your knee and you blow your acl out it's almost never an acute injury it's almost always chronic right exactly exactly now try selling that i, 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 I know i i uh, believe me, uh, every day, every day of practice. <laughs> I know, I know. So I know, but, I know so much. Oh, I'm sorry. What were you going to say? No, no, that's cool. We'll, let's move forward. All right. So, you know, there's an underlying system here that kind of connects everything. And I'm not talking about the nervous system. I'm talking about the fascia. So why yeah. is the fascia so important? What is the fascia? And is that what you're primarily working on? Well, it's an awesome question. So, uh, we're we're in we're living in the world where there has been um, a lot of research on the fascia. It, typically, in in the old days, was the something that when when a doctor would do a cadaver lab and go in, they would slice right through the fascia, looking to get to what they thought they were looking for. And um, fascia, in short, is becoming known as the tissue of form. In other words, if we were to flash. All of the other systems in the body, the circulatory system, etc., away and just saw the fascia, it would be most representative 
of what Noah looks like, of what I look like, of what anybody looks like. Right. Now, the fa- the fascia, you can't get lost in the fascia because if you just think all it is is fascia, well, then you're not using the bones as placeholders to work that soft tissue around it. So fascia is connective tissue. We call it the tissue of form. It's loaded with um, feedback receptors that tell us we've got pain. It's also loaded with a lot of other good feedback receptors that tell us where we are in space and time. Um, but most importantly, I think, is to understand that um, it, it is a web that connects your complete body. And so if you have scar tissue anywhere in the body, if you've had a repetitive motion injury in the body, that tissue is drawing towards that scar tissue or drawing towards that repetitive motion and building up and thickening to keep you together and to support that continuing range of motion um, thing that you have to do. Um, the key, the key thing that I love to share about it is that it's a non-Newtonian fluid. Fascia is a non-Newtonian fluid, and what that means to me when I'm, I've got a body on the table is that is this: it has emergent properties. If you were to work with it slowly, it will respond and open for you. If you are to bully it, it will actually resist you. And so, with that, I, I, I like quantum physics. I totally. I get it, and I agree a hundred percent. Right, cool. I agree. You know, you, you know, it takes time, though. It yeah. takes time. <laughs> I bet. So, what you're saying is, is that you can, you can release these uh, fascial adhesions, and and you can work with the body to unwind, uh, unwind this uh, issue or concern or problem. Indeed, indeed. You know, being pain free takes commitment, but absolutely, in my mind, a hundred percent, you can. And you can bring your body into a better place. One of my, uh, I'll give you an example for the audience, and I think you might like this, and I might have told you this before. One of my mentors, Perry Nicholson, is a chiropractor, functional movement doc. I'm actually taking a course with him uh, in a month ago revolving around <clears throat> the sternum. But he, he yeah. has something called uh, Big Toe Mojo, and it's basically an example <laughs> of the fascia where – you know, you have fascial fascia that attaches to the big toe, kind of wraps around your foot, then wraps it around the other side of your knee, up around your back, up your shoulder, and up into your neck, right? Indeed, indeed. So, so you could have a problem in your big toe Yes. that is causing your neck pain or vice versa. Absolutely, 100%. So I always thought that, that was a – to me, that's like a perfect example of what the fascia is. It's a great example. Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for that. So now as we move forward, uh, just uh, in the same line of uh, Bodywork 101, where does energy work fit in, and uh, is it all energy work? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, well, hmm. Um, Energy work, um, no, you know, it's – we're, with craniosacral in particular, we're working most with the the brain and the spine, and we're – with with gentle holds, we're we're seeking to tune to turn on the the body's intelligence and and its ability to repair and heal itself. And when we can get the the nerves of the spine and, and the brain to be very still, it's almost like the ego vanishes and you're able to the person is able to get a real gen, uh, genuine feel of their essence of who they are. And and from that place. Healing turns on from the inside, the very depth of the person from the inside out. And so that's the distinguish, that's what distinguishes energy work to me from body work. Body work is almost like more nuts and bolts from the outside. Energy work is seeking to take the information field that, that the body is and turn on, on its intelligence so that from the inside out, from the depths, it starts to get to unwind and heal itself in a way that truly is very special. So in essence, they, they work hand in hand. They're, it's, it's just like kind of like opposite ends of the, the, the rainbow. You know, it's just, you know, what, what, who, whatever the client, whichever client or patient comes through the door, it's kind of like, okay, what's going what's gonna to be the tool that's going to expedite the most generous amount of healing for this person? Right, right. Now, when... Somebody walks into your room, your treatment room, whatever. I'm not sure what you call it. Mm -hmm. Um, What does a session look like for a new client? And then what does a session look like um, for somebody 
uh, an, an, an existing client? Because I think it's going to be similar with most people that are similar to what you do. Yes. I'd say I'm going to answer the, the back end of that first and say, you know, it's like once they walk in, we're getting to work, <laughs> you know. Right. But the lineup is um, – I like to ask, you know, sit with the person for five minutes or, you know, on occasion, extended periods of time if, if, if it's required. But to sit with them and ask them how they feel in their body, um, have them share with me any challenges that they have, any traumas, any physical traumas, um, any repetitive motion items that they, they can be aware of, that they're aware of in their life, um, Anything related to their whole being, really. Some people it's emotional, some people it's physical, and everything in between. But we have a conversation, and then I'll have them stand in front of me, and I'll look at their body in terms of the structure. So it's, you know, it's the essential, vertical and horizontals. And from that, I use the bony landmarks to, to get to work. But so it's a, a conversation is standing with them, looking at their body, pointing out things that they may or may feel already in their body and creating awareness that way first. And so then when I start to touch on the table, then that corroborates what we're talking about before we even begin. So then they can say, oh, I feel that. So then we get to work, um, I'll, I'll, depending on the client and the issues, um, you know, we'll place bones into a more appealing place in terms of the overall dynamic and work connective tissue around it to make it stick, create lasting change. And then um, I'll often end with, um, even if it's not a craniosacral session, I'll often end with a gentle hold on the sacrum or the head. And and sometimes, uh, despite all, all the deep work, sometimes I'll get that intelligence, that, that information field and healing from the inside to turn on, to bring down the body and calm the nervous system and integrate any, any and all of the touch that has happened throughout the session. Um, from there, um, um, one, ca- one, one thing that I forgot is I usually start with energy points around the body developed um, by Bob Shri of Source Point Therapy. It's a great ritual that I um, picked up from him and used, and the point- points are from the right side of the body, order, and then from the feet, balance, and from the left side, harmony, and from the top of the head, flow. And this ritual creates a safe space and oftentimes allows right out of the gate the person's nervous system to downregulate and receive the work better. Right. So that downregulation usually looks like some sort of deep breath in their shoulders and their body just relaxing, right? Per- to very set, well said. Perfectly. Cool. I see that often. Sometimes it just takes a gentle hand on somebody's sacrum and all of a sudden, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely out. <laughs> yeah. So. All right, so let's go through a, a few of the different techniques and schools of thought and practice uh, so just people so people get an idea of what they are. Um, first one's craniosacral therapy. I know within craniosacral therapy there's a lot of different schools of thought. I'm, I have 30 hours of up ledger training. Um, I mm-hmm. feel that's somewhat similar but different than what you're doing. But from your perspective, could you explain craniosacral therapy? And then I might add a few things when you're done. Sure. Uh, cranial sacral in, in, in my experience now. So technical, technical, um, technically speaking, I believe they follow, mm, they're very much in, in, in the same, they, they use the same techniques. And then, and then as you split, I think, um, um, that you have the different influences from the masters, right? So I think up ledger is one and, and what, what nourished, what nourished and fed me in particular was the work of uh, Hugh Milne, who does um, his own, he, he does, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Hugh Milne, Hugh Milne Institute. He does craniosacral, and he's about using your intuition and deeply listening. You know, so, so, so I, I, I will do a hold and that may be the hold that I am at for quite some time. So it's, it's, I'm less, I'm less drawn into the technical sides where I didn't, I didn't do this or I didn't do that and I got to follow up with this. Rather, I'm focused on the client, the patient, uh, with a deep listening and intent on bringing stillness to their body and wellness that way. Now, now so cranial sacral, uh, cranial 
sacral is basically both ends of the spine, the cranial, uh, the cranial bones, the, the bones that surround the brain. The sacrum is the base of your spine, which you sit on. Um, yep. There's a motion between the sacrum and the cranium that are, is, is unbelievable. You know, there's different theories of thought on, on what that pulse is from 12 yeah. to up to 200. And, you know, uh, right. you, if you, it's, you can feel it if you put your hands on a, a, the back of somebody's head. It is a different rhythm than circulatory or uh, the breath. It's, it's, yeah. it's, an in, it's not interesting. It's, it's fascinating. Yeah, I uh, love it. But that motion allows for the fluid to circulate around the spinal cord. Mm-hmm. It, it, those bones are, are control the parasympathetic part of your nervous system, which is the, the rest digest system. So it is an extremely um, important system. It, it has been used for a very long time to treat, and treat is, a, you have to be careful when you say treat, but people yeah. find great results with anything from autism and ADHD to migraine headaches to, yeah. to um, pre- uh, uh, not being able to get pregnant, so on and so forth. So it is a relaxing, integral, its own system of the body, and it's, it is truly fascinating. And, it, and I'm a person who likes to experience things, and craniosacral therapy is something that I think everybody should at least experience once to kind of get a feel for what what, uh, what it is or what it can do for you. Yeah, I, I thank you, Noah. I mean, that was awesome. And, and I would just add this one thing is that, you know, traumas, traumas to the head are, are you know, that, that primary blockage or, or that lesion, you know, is, is often the most challenging to sort of to find. But plenty of people hit their car head in car accidents and sports and, and just accidents in general. And, and you can overlook that. But if you're able to bring that, that space, the cranium down through the spine into a, a nice, nice healing place, it's um, very, very transformative. Yeah. For a very long time, people thought that the cranial bones didn't move and the cranial bones are like the four in the occiput and the temporal bones yeah. and the facial bones and even the sphenoid, which is deep set inside your brain that basically cradles uh, the pituitary gland. But the, all those bones move, and the motion of those bones are, are really crucial for health and wellness, for sure. Uh, true. Uh, now, Rob, Rob, well, I guess I, I've experienced rolfing through your work, but uh, how about ex- a little bit of an explanation on rolfing or structural balancing? Okay, so rolfing, um, created by Ida Rolf. Um, and my teacher called it structural balancing. There had been, there had been the Guild and, uh, the Ralphing Institute in Boulder for some years, and there was a split, and there's splinter groups, and so they created the International Association of Structural Integration to try to keep it together. Um, but there are several splinter groups and great, great, great warriors of the work out there. Um, I, I feel, uh, that What's key to know about this work is that the intent is to work with the fascia and the fascia lines. There's some great guys out there, Tom, Tom Myers being one of them. Um, there's Ed Malpan in San Diego. But um, the, the, also the, the other thing to know is that it's not just the style of touch. It's also the recipe. So there's a recipe of, for instance, in, in, in one manner of, of, of practices to lift the superficial front line, to bring the back line down, and on the third session to define the side body, and you go deeper from there. So it's not just a technique in depth and in a deep touch, but it's also a particular recipe to bring the whole body into uh, a, a more organized place. And, and so that, that's, that's it. Right. So another way in saying that is if you walk into a, a Rothing practitioner's office, you're basically going to be seen, what, somewhere minimal 12 times? Is that usually 12 to 18 times kind of deal? Is I'd that... say about that. Yeah, I'd say about that. 10 to 15. 10 to 15. Okay. And uh, it's rather intense work. Is that fair to say? Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It definitely is. And uh, one that I have very little knowledge about, and I, um, but I think I've experienced it again uh, with your work, is source point therapy. Yeah. So, you know what? Source point therapy, it, to, to, to be as concise as possible, is like energy work. It's like 
not craniosacral, but it's like it's like energy work, but not focused on the brain and the spine, using the whole body. Okay. Okay. So it's so you're touching specific points. You're tuning into the person's body. You're yeah. trying to. You're trying to what? Find where their energetic restrictions are and to try to release exactly. them? Exactly. You, in fact, part of the, 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 the um, technique is to, you know, ask, um, we're, we're calling in um, help from wherever it is that you call in help, whoever your, your greater, greater than you is. Right. And, right. and finding the primary blockage. And, you know, first you say a hello to the body it's usually a gentle touch and then we're asking to find the primary blockage from that primary blockage in one session you may find a second blockage possibly a third but usually it's like a hello and then two blockages and from that those three touches the work is unwinding from there so the body begins to respond again kind of like energy craniosacral energy work in where you're turning on the intelligence of the body rather than trying to make something happen with your hands to their body right now I, I found over the years that a lot of these different type of energy techniques uh, take a lot from acupuncture points is that the same with source point source point therapy or no um Mm, not in this in, not in this instance um we we don't look for anything in particular we're we're just open to to touching a primary blockage okay all right yeah That's cool so over your years of doing this are you comfortable sharing any success stories and you don't have to name any names or anything like that sure well let's see there's two that come to mind um there's a woman that I'm currently working with who has osteoarthritis in the shoulders bilaterally. And so, you know, you know, I mean, that's pretty much an end game, right? Yep. Um, and so um, I've put her through some gravity exercises and, and work with her um, out of the gate. It was was every week. And now it's uh, we, we we've weaned off to every month, but she's so far not had to have surgery. So she's dancing, she's doing yoga, she's going about her life with probably 60 to 70% less pain than before we started working on her. So now we, we've taken it to a place where we're managing, managing it really well. So, you know, we're trying to keep her away from the surgery and um, we're doing that with the gravity exercises and the body work. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really the name of the game, right? Allowing people to do what they love to do and want to do, regardless of their age, right? Uh, absolutely. 100%. In fact, you know, it's like when somebody lies on the table, you know, my, my, my Mark Manton out in Colorado was one of my favorite teachers. He, he said in my very first class with him, it's like, why do we do this? It's like to bring the body into a better place and to create space for this human to maximize their potential, right? Yep. <laughs> you know, you know, and then you, and then your head blows up, and then you get to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you mentioned you had another story too. You had two. Yes, uh, a gentleman who's um, achieved uh, success on his own in the restaurant business. He's got three successful uh, restaurants, and he came to me uh, feeling low back pain and pain into uh, the testicles. And so I said, and he was actually experiencing um, like heartburn sensations. And so I said, let's get to work. And um, I did a lot of lower belly work. Uh, we, we, we softened up a lot of the tissue in the glute area. We got the lower back back to, to, to ease back. And we lifted up his chest and broadened his shoulders. And uh, what happened with him is, after about three sessions, he didn't have heartburn. He was his back pain was diminishing more and more. I don't think he complains about it anymore. I haven't seen him in a while, but um, that's a good sign. And so what he did was, um, he, in addition to his three successful restaurants, this past summer he went to study Pilates and got a certification, and now he wants to share with Pilates with everybody for his own 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 spine wellness. So we turned his life around. He was ready to have surgery. Yeah, that, that, those are the kind of stories you want to hear that, you know, that you, a successful entrepreneur who's, you know, stressed through the roof, but it's really coming from uh, physical issues, corrected, and now he's 
like you said, changed courses, and now he wants to help people. That's like the ultimate. That's the ultimate. <laughs> right. Right. Now, what's the um? Now you're you're basically local, like right outside New York City in uh, in um, Lyndhurst, New Jersey, as I am. So, what is the best way for people to get in touch with you? My email address: um, d a n dot b o i s i t s at gmail dot com. Dan dot voices at gmail dot com. So if somebody wants to ask you a question or inquire about your work or maybe even a potential referral you, for, that you know from somewhere else in your travels, you'll be glad to help them, correct? A hundred percent. Absolutely. In fact, I like a little bit too much to talk about this stuff. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Uh, you know, your, your wife always says in, in yoga classes how, you know, a Friday evening for you is watching a documentary <laughs> on fascia. <laughs> Oh my God, it's sick. <laughs> uh, it's great. It's great. So, last last question I ask each and every one of my guests is, what is your rhythm, Dan? Uh, just about every day from waking to sleeping. Okay, so uh, my good fortune has me having weekends off, so that's my play time. But my work days, Monday through Friday, our dog wakes us up about four thirty-five, so I get her up, get her out. And when we come back after she's um, done her thing, um, I feed her. And while I'm feeding her, I go um, on the odd days to uh, interval training. On the even days, I do my spiritual practice, which is playing playing the piano for me, my music. Um, and then I'll have um, three to five clients depending on the day. So my, my days are broken up into two-hour chunks where I'll have a – a 7.30, a 9.30, 11.30, a 1.30. Sometimes I'll have a 7.30, 9.30, and a 5.30 in the evening. No, it so, sort of all varies like that. So I have two-hour blocks of time for people to come see me. And then usually about 3.30 I like to be done. I'll return home, get the dog out, play my piano, start the evening rituals. Me and my wife may go for a walk, a longer walk with the dog. And my evening rituals, including increasingly harder to, to shut off of any electronics, but try to pl unplug, have a cup of tea, a uh, little food, and, and just chill out for the rest of the evening from like 7, 8 on. And then I'm in bed usually by 9. Yeah, well, That's we're, it. We're right on target with the 9 o'clock to bed. Holy mackerel. <laughs> if I can get to bed at 7.30, I would, but that's impossible. Um, I'm with you. Tell, uh, tell our audience a little bit about Gabby because she's a special dog. Oh my gosh. So this, this rescue dog from Texas came to our lives and with her big ears and her mohawk and all of her love. Um, uh, we had a couple that rescues dogs in the town over from us and they brought her to us. And the very first night they brought her to us, they brought her with two dogs. Um, the one was very quiet, but this one, Gabby, like wiggled right into my lap and into my life and they said so so what do you think you want to you know take a night and see how you feel about it and I said nope she's staying so ever since we brought her into our life we bring her to our yoga studio um, and she says hello to everybody it's actually quite incredible to see her in the yoga room when people are set up for yoga class she'll go in and walk to each mat and say and sniff and say hello to everybody in the practice and my wife does an active neurosculpting uh, meditation and there was one instance um, to date so far that we know where where Jody was having a powerful conversation with a woman who was it was uh, very emotional and Gabby got up from Jody and walked over to this woman and sat in her lap and to me that blew my mind but she's a bundle of love she's our mascot here at become one wholeness and I don't know what I've done without her yeah, I, I'm, I'm giving a little presentation at the yoga studio tomorrow morning, and I'll take a class at six. And uh, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see. I'll be too. there. <laughs> All right. So thank you very much, Dan. Um, what a pleasure. Yeah, it was great. It was great. My name is Dr. Noah Decor, your co-host, and you are listening to the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. If you like what you've heard today, please share this with your friends and family and encourage them to subscribe on iTunes. Better yet, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please give us a five-star rating. It helps more people hear the information as well. We can be found on Spotify and YouTube as well. You can sign up for our incredible weekly email at www.beyondyourwildestgenes.com. Don't forget to check out our new premium supplement line and thank you as my oldest son Hayden says be awesome 
and never on awesome. Thanks, Dan. Excellent. Thank you. It's Dr. Noah, and I'm back. I suspect you loved listening to this week's podcast release. So the book of the month for October 2019 is Now is the Way, an unconventional approach to modern mindfulness by Corey Allen. I personally highly recommend this book. It really helped me with my meditation practice. You can listen to me interview the author on September 23rd podcast release. The supplement of the month for October 2019 is BYWG's Nutrition's Probiotic Power Blend. Probiotic Power is a shelf-stable, comprehensive probiotic with a whopping 25 billion CFUs in each capsule, meaning it's very potent and includes nine of the most beneficial bacterial strains from the lactobacillus and bifidobacter families. It also contains a small amount of prebiotics as well. For the month of October, the 10% discount code is OCT19HEALTHYGUT. Remember, it'll be in the show notes. In the archives on our podcast and on our website, you can listen to a comprehensive review of all our supplements, and in the month of October, one podcast release will be dedicated to probiotic power. The product of the month for October is a brand new company that we partnered with, Peak Tea Crystals. My wife and I have been enjoying these super easy-to-use teas for several weeks and absolutely love them. Peak teas have exquisite flavor and are uber convenient. All you do is tear open a packet, pour the crystals in some water, and stir, hot or cold. Their teas have up to 12 times the oxidants, antioxidants of other teas, exceed the USDA organic standards, and they're triple toxin screened for pesticides, heavy metals, and molds. You know how important this is. Among those antioxidants are polyphenols that include epicatechins, catechins, 3-O-methylgallic acid, gallic acid, and caffeic acid all showing extensive healthy benefits, including gut health. This leads me to an incredible offer for the first 15 days of October and a perfect complement to our probiotic power. Our friends at Peak Tea were generous enough to give us 17% off discounts to share with you on their gut health bundles, including free shipping on U.S. orders from October 1st through October 15th. Most people don't realize that polyphenols and teas are natural prebiotics. It might be the simplest way to keep your gut flora in healthy, natural balance. The kicker is the only way to make sure you're actually getting high-quality polyphenols in sufficient quantities from tea you're drinking. This is where peak tea crystals come into play in a big way. The link to the special gut bundle offer will be in our monthly releases as well as the direct link to their entire catalog of teas. Thank you for your time. Be awesome and never unawesome.